Good morning, this is Open for Business here on BFM 89.9, the business station. I'm Lily Chai. Lewis is here to share Claire Organic's journey as well as how she has benefited from the SME digitization grant she received from the Ministry of Finance from Budget 2022 scheme. Welcome to the show, Louise. You named your business after your daughter, Claire. And the reason why you started this business is that you want to ensure that ingredients that uh, she uses are safe and naturally derived. Can you elaborate a little bit on what you do and how the whole business came about? Right. Good morning. My name is Louise. I'm the founder of Claire Organics. Thank you for having me today. A quick sharing on my brand story. How did it all get started, right? 10 years ago, I made my first bar of soap when I was nursing. I was a nursing mom breastfeeding for my daughter. She was almost one year old and was I was uh, looking high and low for natural baby products 10 years in that market it was not very easy to find and um, so happened in luck I found a, an opportunity to learn to make my first bar of handcrafting soaps out of my own milk so that was when I found the love and passion that I really fall in love in making all these natural formulations for everyone starting from myself my baby and my family that is when she inspired me and I named the brand after her name in Claire Organics, we specialize in handcrafting natural soaps as well as 100% natural body care products that's infused with plant-based and as well as essential oil aromatherapy goodness. So everything that I created, the formulation myself, has to be kind to human, kind to your skin, kind to every living being in the planet. That is the vision behind the brand as well as the brand promise that we have been keeping the brand going on. Can you share? Share a little bit on your experience before Claire Organics came about. Were you? Uh, do you have any experience in the business or entrepreneurial space before this? Before I started the brand, I have no business background. I was basically in um, uh, ten years in marketing, advertising, and graphic design. So when um, I started jump into building a brand itself, it's quite um, for me with someone with no business background and not very good in numbers, especially right. So that was quite. Um, difficult for me in terms of how we manage the cost, right? How to sustain the team. And, but in looking at the bright side with my, um, background on, in advertising, it helps in terms of building the brand, the brand image, the um, brand identity in packaging as well. That was part of the crucial elements in building a brand. So you mainly sell body care products, right? Baby right. care, mother care, mm. uh, hair care and essential oils. Mm. So what products do you have to date and how many SKUs do you have? Yeah, from 10 years ago, less than 10 SKU. Now I grew into more than um, almost 70 to 80 SKU. And halfway through, I jumped into studying like certified aromatherapy courses. Then where I um, really expand in my infused aromatherapy kind of uh, skincare range. So with so many products, right? Mm. 70 over SKUs. Mm. They do center around one core element, which is your essential oils, right? Like, so where do you source your ingredients from? Essential oil is something that has to come all over the world. For example, you get um, peppermint from maybe India and maybe you get sandalwood or frankincense from Egypt. Yeah, because they are uh, really where they specially coming from is from that really the source itself is the, company, uh, the, the country itself. During the pandemic, right, there's so much disruption in, in terms of the supply chain. They couldn't ship things over. So during the pandemic, how did you navigate through these issues, especially when you're sourcing most of your ingredients from different countries? Mm. Right. Um, the impact of pandemic actually um, for us quite a bit of ne on the negative side. Maybe I just share a few uh, areas of it. Um, one of it is the supply chain that you mentioned where the um, majority, especially packaging, even though the ingredients itself is from all over the world, but mostly packaging is from China. Let's say the bottle or the, the, the gift boxes itself yeah. is from, from, it's the biggest supply in the world is where the packaging from is the biggest maker and all the world the factory supply from mostly from China. So that was when we are facing um, packaging issues and logistic was stuck halfway through and um, during during the MCO time, right? That was not just myself. I can see the, during the supply chain is really a retail, uh, affecting so many retail businesses and 
what we did was to turn around where we um coming up different strategy campaigns like um bring your own um packaging or bring your own bag so we sort of reduce uh, packaging during that time and and also is very much going aligned with our go green uh, concept where we also encouraging um, our ecosystem and our customer base to join us in saving, um, reducing plastic, reducing packaging. So that is also part of our uh, mission. Oh, so customers can actually bring their own containers to buy your products at your physical outlets, I assume? Right, right. Currently, it, it's available in Gardens Mall as well as um, Publica. So besides having the white flag in that time, so we launched this Team Claire Ambassador where we come in to support those who want to build their uh, side income. That's one. And also to um, learn some special skills where because we provide training and everything. So that is where we want to have a support system to support the community who want to build their side income and have their family. Um, we could we can craft the, um, maybe a career path together, some a safe space for them to learn and learn and grow. So uh, the product that kickstarted and grew your business, right, is your handmade soaps. Mm. And they're still your bestseller after 10 years running right. the business. Yes. Uh, do you still hand make the soaps or have you found a manufacturer to help you with that process? We are partnering with manufacturers to handcraft for us. Uh-huh. So they actually, we, yes, we partially with machines and, and partially with handcrafting. Right. Mm-hmm. Looking at your product's price point, they're not necessarily the cheapest in the market, right? Mm. A bottle of 50 ml essential oil starts from 170 ringgit. And while some other conventional brands, they can offer less than 100 ringgit for the same 50 ml. Mm. So my question is, with such a big disparity in terms of the price, mm. the, the market is very competitive. It is. And how do you justify your price and how do you make sure that you stand out from the market? Mm. I guess, first of all, um, the quality tells, right? And um, when we source from all over the world, where we go through a, a whole sourcing process, we test Every, from every supplier ourselves, that's one. And we make sure um, every single essential oil comes f- with the certificate that they should have, right? So that's two. And most importantly, um, being a certified aromatherapist myself, I blend some special oils like functionality oils. So that helps into creating different SKU where you cannot get in anywhere in the world. So that is because it's coming from my own special blend. Okay, with rising costs and inflationary pressures, how much room do you have left to cover this cost? And have you adjusted the price uh, to combat these issues? Yes, we actually adjusted recently, most recently, just last started last month, right? Um, first time, uh, first time in ten years, the first time we adjusted the price due to this uh, worldwide inflation, where where we we really couldn't bear the cost anymore. So that was the the adjust, pricing adjustment come in place. And I want to explore on the grant that you have received from the Ministry of Finance. So uh, MOF did highlight in their budget 2022 performance that uh, its SME digitization grant scheme worth about 38.61 million ringgit. It has benefited more than 21,000 beneficiaries and one of them is actually Claire Organics. So before the pandemic, what did your sales look like and were you profitable up to 2020 when the pandemic happened? Actually, um, a, a quick sharing on on pre-pandemic, what were what was the uh, the situation like? Well, in, in during my in my business model, especially where we are having big, bigger chunk in um, more, almost eighty percent revenue coming from the retail scene. That was pre-pandemic, and twenty uh, percent in e-commerce where we barely started, right? And the in terms of system wise, that was that that um why we hired why we gonna adopt the digitalization was because where we're facing issues like having um business model of retail and e-commerce where the two systems don't speak to each other right so that was a big issues um in terms of customers um will be confused it's like um their their membership is oh i have i'm a member but they are not in retail mm. but they walk into maybe they purchase online before but they want to purchase from any of my 
retail stores. So that was where the problem comes. Uh, looking into the situation like that pre-pandemic, and it doesn't help in terms of building the all the database together. That was the situation that we're facing in terms of um, um, our e-commerce system. Right. So there were a lot of articles written during the pandemic that a lot of people are more aware of uh, self-care and self-pampering. Mm. And that's why a lot of self-care products did surge during the pandemic, right? Mm. So did your sales reflect that situation as well? Yes, yes, we noticed a big change on during the pandemic and a really huge increase on uh, sales increase on uh, aromatherapy essential oil products, especially those products like candles, like that just helps into relaxing and providing a good sleep. So that is a bigger, bigger part of it, a big change. Right. The biggest question that I want to ask is, what was the reason for you to apply for the why why was there a need for you to get a financial grant from MOF? Was it because uh of your physical stores? Because stores and shops were not able to operate during the pandemic, right? And they're all closed. Uh, but a lot of businesses still needed to pay rent at that time to sustain the business, right? right. Uh was this part of the reason why you applied for the grant? That is a uh- Partially, that was the reason. And um, p- uh, partly the biggest impact of the pandemic was especially to the retail scene. It was really heavy on a heavier side. Like like you mentioned, we have to sustain the rental with you, even though we are forced to close for a few months time. That was re- basically literally zero revenue from the retail. And a lot of us are really suffering in terms of um, you know, maintaining the cash flow and uh, sustaining the rental as well as they have to end up like with employment retrenchment or even close down the business, right? We can see a lot of the highly turnover in in the uh, shopping malls. So that was the situation, what, what was like during the MCO. And um, for me, why why is there a big s- switch? And how is, how is the grant coming in to help me? When I decided to apply for the grant, uh, it was utilized into building um, an integration system where, uh, whereby it helps me in bridging both systems for to, from online and offline. So where this customer database gets to come in place, uh, where we, the both system, when, when both systems talk to each other, we, we integrate and we synchronize customer database. We create customer loyalty and we get to reward more of the customer loyalty points and more benefits, more, cus- more membership perks. So that was one of the, um, bigger, um, benefits in terms of utilizing the new system of you of the um the digitalization grant and then uh can i ask how much was granted to you it's a 5000 digitalization grant sme oh. and then everything was uh put into leveraging your the, the digital your yeah. digital presence the right? integration of the system right mm. so okay so speaking of this after you have integrated your system mm. for both the online and the uh, physical stores right in terms of like your revenue how much has it improved and increased uh, after you have utilized this grant Mm. That was, uh, the grant was utilized into building the integrating system, right? In, in, the, uh, post system and my retail system and e-commerce. So when both, all system comes together and integrate with each other, that was when we are able to, to bring in a lot of benefits, especially for customers in the loyalty program. So that was when we gain, um, in, in, um, a number of customer base database that was increased at least 20% and as well as the revenue um, at least 10 to 15 percent. So during the pandemic, it was and it still is a tough time for a lot of businesses out there. Right. So what were the challenges that you faced? Mm. Actually, pandemic time, we make a, a big changes, a few area in changes in, um, besides doing the uh, digitalization change in, in terms of system. And we also, and in expanding the team as well. So that was one of the um, a few area that we um, have 
bigger chunks in terms of expenses and overhead costs. And that is, um, we ended up had to make a, make a loss in the year 2021. And also, of course, the MCO, we closed down a few months that was affecting the sales as well. And But looking at the bright sides of the pandemic and when MCO finally ended and everyone get out of the house, we managed to see the retail scene is actually recovering very quickly. But um, having said that, the e-commerce size still on the growing uh, uh, chart, on the growing chart, very looking very good in terms of numbers. We managed to grow from twenty percent to fifty percent to uh, after the pandemic in mm-hmm. terms of e-commerce sales. You have been in Watson's, Aeon, and Metro Jaya retail outlets ever since back way back before the pandemic, right? right. Uh, can you share a little bit on the steps that you have taken to achieve being on retail shelves? Mm. Um, there are several factors. Um, first was what I see where we were building the brand for several years already. I managed to make myself as one of the pioneers in the industry. So when Watson's decided to expand their essential oil series, they, they were looking out a few um, pioneer in Malaysia that I was one of it so they they uh, approached me so I was uh, very uh, thankful for that opportunity so this is Claire's 10 years mm. up and running right? right where do you see Claire Organics in the next 10 years mm. looking up to in the next 3, 5, 10 years I am um, so excited to say that we are going to go out of Malaysia right yeah because um, Malaysia Serving Malaysia for 10 years already, I think my product, if you think my product is good, I will want to bring my good products to show or to share with the whole world. I want to show everywhere, everywhere in the world there is such good products from Malaysia. Thank you so much for spending time with me, Louise. Thank you so much, Lily. <laughs> 